Yeah. Rolling. Mic check, check. How do I want to sit? Can I sit like that? I'll stop touching my mic now. My name's Heather Little and I just turned 44. I've had 52 rounds of, of chemo and so you might hear me forgetting words or taking a pause, trying to remember where we are or where, what we're talking about. So I apologize for that in advance. Your house is beautiful. Thank you. I love it. It's my nest. I got a feeling when I walked into this house and I said to my realtor, I don't care what we do, this will be my house. <laughs> it was the feeling. I just felt home. I felt like this was where I wanted to be and to nest and to recover. Yeah. The cancer diagnosis goes back three years, this August actually. But I would say that I've been on a self-health refocus for a number of years before that. I really wanted to get my physical health under control. I wanted to have a better relationship with food than I'd had. I didn't have the best relationship with food, but any other quote diet that I went on was not sustainable. And I would have success and then guess what? Gain it all back. I don't even call the Livy method a diet because it's not. I am a firm believer in the program. I've referred a lot of people to it because it's not crazy. It's just follow the program you'll get the results. Move on with your life. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm looking forward to this. Ta-da! I think the last time I saw Heather was a fashion show in March. She was doing a fundraising thing, I think. Anyways. coming all this way to visit Stop me. It, of course. Oh my yeah. gosh, you look so great. Thank what the you. Heck? I know, I always say that the outside of me doesn't quite resemble what's happening Nothing on the inside. inside. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling pretty good today. Okay. Yeah, today's pretty good. I slept pretty well last night. Nice, I did not. I did. <laughs> so I think we're gonna just have a seat all here right. and catch up. All right, let's do it. Seems so formal. Should we just like, who's who's holding the box? Who's Is crying first? Who's crying first? <laughs> We're not gonna cry. We're not gonna cry. I know we met through doing the program, but I I've, I've had a lot of clients. They're not always my friend. And I'm trying to think like, when did we become such good friends? And like, how did it all like? So I'm assuming through your mom. Your mom did the program. Like, what's the story? So I did the program first. You, no, you didn't. Yes. No, so you I didn't. was yes, I was living out in what? Newfoundland. Yeah. And I'd been moved for work, and I worked. Um, I'm on a leave now, but I was working for RBC Dominion Securities, okay, the yeah. investment side of the Royal yeah. Bank. And I'd been promoted and moved to Newfoundland. That's right. In the dead of winter by myself, right. didn't know a soul, yeah. didn't know anything, didn't know what to do, didn't know where to go. When um, I got there, I kind of noticed that I was maybe eating a little more than one should. I was really homesick. Okay. I was really overwhelmed at work. Um, I didn't really have any support system out there. All my support system was here. I'm late night creeping on Instagram. Okay. Somebody that is a mutual friend, I'm watching her stories, and she's, Gina this, Gina that. All of a sudden, I was like, in the bowels of your Instagram. Okay, so and I said to myself, now's, I'm, now's my time to change. I've got to change now. I've yeah. got to take control of this situation. No more pity party. You're living in a beautiful place. You've got an amazing job. Just go do it. I think stress for me was a, a big trigger where I would eat to make myself feel less stress. 
in hindsight. Going through the Livy program, I learned that there are different ways to deal with stress. There was never any pressure in my home for someone to look a certain way or eat a certain way. There were, there were always healthy options. There were always um, healthy dinners being made. I think it kind of boiled down to that teenage girl not quite knowing what you're supposed to look like or what you're supposed to be. My body was changing. When I first started working with Gina, I ended up losing about 60 pounds. The, the doctors tried to tell me that it was due to my colon cancer diagnosis because one of the symptoms of colon cancer is extreme weight loss. I was like, no, I did this on purpose. I tried really hard. I did it slowly. I did it the right way. I even phoned Gina and she said, absolutely, you did this yourself. It was not the cancer, you did it. So she, she validated me, <laughs> which made me feel good. What's your favorite thing in this room? Oh gosh, probably the table, the table. because that's where everybody gathers yeah. and we all play games here. How many bedrooms do you have? Three bedrooms. Oh, I'm coming to stay. So this is, this is, this is like yours? my oh, nest. Oh my gosh. So when I am having my naps or going to sleep, I have a rule that I only sleep. There's no TV, there's no oh, yeah, there's nothing. anything, because I think it's really important to have separation because it becomes too easy to stay in your pajamas, stay in your bed, yeah. get back in your bed, watch a show, get back in your bed, eat your lunch. It's, it, I don't want that rhythm. Here are the medals from my races I've done. Okay, so here's Iron Man. Like a whole Iron Man, not just a 20, 5K. No. Like this a full was, on, after you lost the weight, this is like you were out there getting these medals. Uh, before too. What? Oh, yeah. so you were running before? Yes. With the 60 pounds yes. on you. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Did you, what was your timing before versus after? Well, I never got to do one after. Oh, yeah. that's right, you were training. Yeah, I was training. Oh. So these are all my medals. And people love to see my sunglasses. Yeah, you do. And this whole room <laughs> is to be subliminal messages for me. So a friend's daughter drew these Heather Strong pictures. Oh and so I want to be reminded, I walk in this room every day yeah. to get changed. Okay, yeah. Heather's strong. Okay, you're really strong. You've done all these races. You're super cool. I, I'm pretty cool <laughs> with all my sunglasses. I also know that throughout all of that, you've also been fundraising and raising oh money. And you have this whole Heather Strong campaign. Like, you must be close to over 100000 no. Over 100000 dollars. So my first year that I was diagnosed, um, my fundraising efforts were put toward my surgeons in Toronto. At Princess Margaret, I raised over $60,000 for them. And then I changed my efforts to Owen Sound. So I do my surgeries in Toronto and then um, my oncology is done in Owen Sound. Yeah. I want there to be a legacy of the effort that the Heather Strong community put together yeah. for this. That started day one. My um, manager, he said, you know what? You're Heather Strong. You're hashtag Heather Strong. This is, this is, you've got this. You, if anybody can do this, you can do this. So the hashtag Heather Strong campaign was kind of launched. Yeah. A friend of a friend decided to create merch for me. So there are Heather Strong t-shirts and long sleeve tees and hats and toques and all these different things where they've decided to send all the proceeds to the Own Sound Hospital. Oh, wow. So they're doing it uh, very kindly out of their own pocket to, to donate to the hospital here. Were you surprised by that? Yes. Yeah. It it's I say it's an embarrassment of riches. Why would so many people have so many kind words for me or support for me and I was just being me before and I don't deserve anything special. I'm just a regular person and there are yeah. tons of people going through what I'm going through. I, I just don't get it. How am I so lucky to have the people that are in my life? Oh, stop! Yes, the, the barn, barn door. door with the shoes. Yes. Come on. Yeah. 
Oh, I could see why this place brings you joy. That would bring me an immense amount yeah. of joy. So the other thing about this space is because um, my brother Alexander also put this barn door on, so before it didn't have this. And the reason being is if I ever get to the point where I have mobility issues, I, this is all on one floor. Oh, yeah. I can do everything on one floor. Yeah. So I actually thought about that when purchasing the house as well. Yes. That was important. Yeah. Yeah. Get yourself a little scooter and Yes, yeah. scoot around. <laughs> so three years ago I was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer that had metastasized to my liver, uh, which means the tumors went from my colon um, to my liver. And um, it has since metastasized to my peritoneum, which is the sack of fluid kind of around your stomach that holds your organs in and keeps everything all together. So I'm convinced that I would have not found my diagnosis without having lost the weight because I had zero symptoms of colon cancer. So until it moved to my liver and started causing pain, I would have never known that I had it because I was 41 years old and living in Newfoundland, they don't do colonoscopies on women. So there's no reason anybody would have checked me. And I genuinely believe that the Livy method, having lost the weight and being so in tune with my body and just knowing what felt right and what felt wrong, because you're taught that, that I was having this pain in my upper right, right quadrant and I thought, I don't think I would have felt this. And some of the doctors said, that's probably right. The tumors probably would have had to get way bigger before you'd ever feel them. And they were already taking up 70% of my liver. As of four weeks ago, I was told that the chemo was no longer working and um, that they wanted nature to just take its course. So this, this is, is the living room. Yeah. This is the nest. Yes, I can see this. This is where I spend 80% of my time, I'd say. I can see now why you get out of bed. Yes, yes. <laughs> so even if it's to lay on the couch, it's cozy, lots of places for people to sit. It's a whole vibe. It is, and I was mentioning before, everything is kind of on purpose. Everything is light yeah. and pink and airy yeah. and... Um, and then I was mentioning to you the outside, yeah, this is which such, yes. makes you feel like you are not in the city at all. I, I do like to believe that, that should my time come sooner than we were hoping, that I do come back as something or I can visit in some sort of way, be able to be around all the people I love and support and that supported me. There was a group of people that bent over backwards to get me into world-class surgeons in Toronto to give me the best chance I could have. And they did it without asking me. They just started making phone calls. And in about a day, I had an email from the surgeon saying he'd take me on as a patient. You can't ask for that. And it was, I think, life-changing, I think that's why I'm here three years later. I think a lot of us take our health for granted, and I wish that something in my journey would help somebody see that it's, it's, don't, don't take your health for granted. Don't take the fact that you are a healthy, able-bodied person for granted. How are you, um, I mean, do you just, like, what's your day? Do you, do you just try to stay in the moment? You, yeah. Like, yeah. Depends on how I'm feeling. If I feel like I can get up and go around and do some errands, I will. If I'm not up for it, then other people are happy to run errands for me. Yeah, this is, you know, my pinks, my purples. I love a good hosta. Hostas I know. are me. I can grow hostas. I, there's one thing I can grow, it's a hosta. Yes, they're, they're hard, to, <laughs> hard to kill. Oh, your mom gardens. Yes, yeah. my mom's a big gardener. How's your, has, mom, how's your mom doing? They're doing okay. They, I think, have their moments. 
I think that um, this is obviously really difficult on everybody, family and friends, and um, but they are absolute rock stars. Yeah. The other night I went to bed and I just couldn't stop crying. And I finally, I just phoned my mom and I said, I need you to come over. And my mom and my dad came over and got into my bed with me oh. and just laid with me. And I cried and cried and cried. And they just were rocks. Like they were just steady and calming and not saying everything's going to be okay. Yeah. I was going to say, what do you want to say to people? Like, what kind of conversations do you want to be having? Do you just want to pretend like it's fine, or do you want to go there? Like, I'm happy to talk about my illness at any time with anybody. I'm completely an open book about it. If this can help somebody by listening to me sharing my story, then I'm going to do it. But, you know, one thing that's really hard is people that don't or won't grasp the severity of the diagnosis. Yeah and they kind of have their head in the sand a little bit, and they say, oh, you can beat this. You've got this. There's a difference between being glass half full, and I am glass half full. I am very much, I'm going to fight. I'm going to try everything. I'm going to do my very best to live as long as I can, but I'm also realistic that we're probably looking at months at this yeah. point. So for someone to say to me like, you've got this, kind of angers me a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I was gonna say, you know, I was like, fuck off, no I don't! I, like, like ah! I want to have this. Yeah, you want to. I believe somewhere in my soul I could have this, Yeah. but that chance is so slim that it's very difficult. None of us know when our expiry date is. None of us know. If I were to die yesterday, I would want everybody to think in that kind of mindset. My big one is making sure I tell everybody I love them. This has been something that I have found has helped me a lot. I don't want a day to go by that people that I love don't know that I love them. Mm. It's okay to talk about uncomfortable things, to tell people you love them, yeah. to have those conversations that maybe we aren't wanting to have because they're too scary. So. I just try to make sure that everyone knows I love them every time they see me. So it's not a goodbye every time. Love that. I love you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs>、okay, yes. Well, I'm excited. It's not goodbye because we're going to hang out and have soup yes, later. Yes, we're going to have soup. Is <laughs> your mom, so has she just been doting on you, like home cooked、oh, meals all day, every day? The whole family, friends, <laughs> everybody. It's. I get, I'm spoiled rotten. No one's allowed to say no to me anymore. Well, when your mom invites us for dinner, I'm like, if she's asking, we're coming. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Oh my gosh. Okay, Laura, thank you for putting all our knees under the same table. Bless this food to our use and us to thy service. Keep us always mindful of the needs of others. Bless family and friends. Especially this bunch here. Amen. 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 Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Nice soup dinner. <laughs> I agreed to do this because getting my story out there is really important to me.、Um, since the very beginning, I said if I can help one person through their journey, or help one person through a family member's journey, or a friend's journey, or Doesn't even have to be cancer. It could be any sort of、um, ailment or, or something. I wanted to be able to share in hopes of helping others. Live every single day and laugh all day long. Just have the most fun. Because life's too short to not be having fun in everything you're doing. I could dwell for a day or a week or whatever, but we're not sitting in a pity party. I don't have time for a pity party. So let me deal with my feelings, let me work through them, 
and then I'll move on to being positive and giving back and doing all the things that fill my cup. If it's one week, 10 weeks, two years, 50 years, let's just keep on going until I'm told otherwise. Thank you. I can't say thank you enough. And I truly mean it from the actual bottom of my heart. Thank you to everybody. Just one big blanketed thank you.